One of the questions that I get asked most often by nonprofit professionals is how can my organization tell a story? Like, what exactly do we need to do in order to tell a story that captures the hearts and minds of people and also raises money in the process? It's a great question. And over the years, I've created a step-by-step -step process that I work through when I work with organizations to tell their stories. In fact, it's also what I teach my students inside my class called the Storytelling Nonprofit Masterclass. We've had over 160 organizations go through this class with some pretty amazing results. And today I want to take you a little bit behind the scenes of my process and share with you the steps that I walk through when I do this myself. You'll also want to stay tuned until the very end of this video because, drum roll, it's the last video of the month, which means it's time for our monthly contest. So stay tuned to the end to get the details on that. Hey, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Vanessa Chase Lakshan. I'm the president of the Storytelling Nonprofit. So we're here today to talk about how I tell a story from scratch. And I'm really excited to walk you through the process that I use with my clients and students to do this successfully and to really replicate those results over time. I mentioned the word process a couple of times. I've said the process that I use, the process I take my students through. And that's because I really think about storytelling as a process. And I think it's one of the things that's a super helpful mindset to have when it comes to storytelling and it ultimately leads to better results. Storytelling is not just an outcome. It's not just a thing we're doing. It really is a process. And I find with a lot of things in nonprofit work, being process oriented um, is really helpful and helps us really get into a systematic way of doing things, but also really breaking down more complicated tasks into things that are more manageable for us to do when it comes time to do them. So let's go ahead and get into my process and talk about what I do for storytelling. So the first step in my process is to create a project brief. And this is a practice I've had for years that came out of some work that I did years and years ago when I worked in higher education fundraising. I had a manager who taught me all about using project briefs for our work there, which was essentially about distilling the most important information we had in a project and being able to get us on the same page about the basic and fundamental information of that project. And so I do the same thing for stories as well, especially if you're using that story in a fundraising appeal or a communications campaign. I wanna make sure that myself and the people I'm working with all agree on the basic details, because if we're not on the same page about those, it gets harder to make decisions down the road. What does my project brief include? Well, some things like who the target audience is, what the key messages are, the goal of the project that we're working on, any creative details, information about the channels that we might be using, um, also segmentation information and things like that. Anything that you think is helpful for you to know and to orient yourself and your team to the project should be in the project brief. As I said, this basically gets everyone on the same page about what's happening. And one of the helpful, helpful, helpful steps that I do right at the beginning is once the project brief is created, I make sure it gets approved by everyone who's a stakeholder in the process. So we all have agreed to a basic set of information. And that way down the line, if we're trying to make decisions about the project, the only question we need to ask ourselves is what is most aligned with the brief that we've developed. And we just come back to that information and it really simplifies our decision making process sometimes. The next step in my process is to source story leads. And this is a big process sometimes being able to do this. Um, it's really about being able to find interesting ideas for stories. And to me, this is really one of the most interesting parts of storytelling. I think I'm naturally pretty curious. And so being able to ask questions and get out there and find ideas for stories really gets my creative juices going. And I think is a really fun and interesting part of the storytelling process for, for this work. So I like to listen. I, I do a lot of listening in this process. So I have conversations with people. Um, I start conversations. I just listen for these ideas. I always tell people that conversations are where we find the best stories. And so having conversations with new people that I don't often talk to or staff who work at organizations is a big part of what I do in finding these leads. Oh, too, I've written about and talked about so many really practical ideas for finding stories over the years. Um, I'll link here on this uh, screen to a card to another video I have on finding stories to tell if you need some really tactical ideas for doing this at your nonprofit. The next step in my process is to actually sit down and interview someone for their story. This is a really big part of the process. I'm very convinced at this point in my work that it's not possible to tell a great story unless you've actually talked to the person and captured that story for yourself. Sure, you can get stories secondhand through staff, but I think there's something 
so much better about, and I would say it also increases the quality of the story when you're able to sit down with the person and capture that information firsthand rather than second or third hand. So there's no way around it. This is something that I really recommend you do. Um, there's a few steps that I do in this process. So one, I always do some initial research. I try to gather information about who I'm going to be talking to, a little bit about what they've been through, you know, just some context for myself so that I'm not going into this conversation with nothing, kind of no frame of reference for what we're going to talk about. I like to put together some questions too. Um, not an exhaustive list of questions, usually like five to seven questions that I can start with because I try to think about this interview as a conversation, not one where I'm interrogating someone about all the details of their life. <laughs> That's not going to go well. So I try to really let the conversation move organically and ask questions as they feel natural and respond to what people are saying rather than just sticking very rigidly with the questions that I outlined at the outset of that process. I also like to figure out how I'm going to capture information during this interview. And this is different for everyone. So I sometimes record the conversations. I'll just use my um, recording function on my cell phone, or I will, if I'm recording on a video conferencing service, I'll use, you know, the recording function on that. Um, those are great ways for me to stay present in the conversation and to not have to frantically take notes the entire time. I can come back and listen to the interview again and capture good quotes and things like that. So I find that helpful. Not everyone's comfortable being recorded. So if they're not, and something you should definitely ask for consent for, um, you know, then take some notes and take really good notes. <laughs> so you might need to slow the conversation down a little to capture all the information you want to capture. And the next step in my process is to actually sit down and write the story. And this is probably the biggest and I would say hardest part for a lot of folks is translating the notes they gathered in an interview and the strategy they put together into an actual story that they can then use. One of the things that I do that I find really helpful is to actually schedule time right after that interview to sit down and start working on this. I have found that over the years, one of the things that I used to do, which was a mistake, was I would interview someone and then I would wait like two or three or four days to come back to my notes and actually start working on the writing itself. Um, what I found for me anyways, is that it's much better to do that while it's still fresh in my mind. So one of the things that I do just from my process standpoint is to block off an hour or two after the interview to go through my notes and start working on things while my wheels are turning about that interview. I find that's been a really helpful change to my process. So when I actually sit down and start thinking about the structure of the story and how this is going to go, I use a story structure that I've developed in my work that you can find. I'll link to a video here that's just on the story structure to give you some more information about that. Um, the other thing that I like to do is I like to start writing by crafting the lead sentences for each of the key transition areas in the story. So I like to think about the first sentence, um, you know, the sentence is going to introduce the character, the sentence is going to introduce the, the problem or the conflict in the story, and the sentence is going to transition into a resolution and a call to action. And I find that working on just writing those first gives me like a loose structure where I can kind of see where things are going. And then sometimes what I'll just do is go back in and fill in the details to figure out how do I need to connect these dots so that things flow smoothly throughout this story and make sense and bring people on the journey that I want to take them on. Now, if you're someone who thinks, gosh, I do not enjoy writing. Writing is the least favorite part of this work for me. I hear you. Sometimes writing is tough, even for me doing the amount of writing that I do. I think it's hard some days. <laughs> and so one of the things that I want to just say to you is that nobody gets it right on the first draft. And I would guarantee that if you talk to any professional copywriter in the nonprofit sector, they will say the same thing. The first draft is just that. We always plan to do second and third drafts. And so I find remembering that takes the pressure off for me. I don't have to hit a home run the first time around. The other thing that I find helpful sometimes for folks who struggle with writing a little bit, especially in capturing their natural tone and cadence in their writing, is to actually, rather than sitting down and typing it out, to record yourself. So do a voice memo on your phone and just talk through the story. Talk it out and do it, say what you would say if you were talking to someone about it. 
and use that as your first draft. Transcribe it and start working from that instead. And I find that sometimes that can help get us through that initial kind of round of writer's block, but it also will capture your tone and style in writing in a way that you might not be able to do if you just sat down and started typing in a Word document. So that's an overview of my process for how I tell stories from scratch and the process that I go through. I hope this is helpful for you as you think about your own process and build out your own process for better storytelling at your organization. So as I mentioned at the top of this video, this is the last video of the month here in July 2019, and so that means it's time for our monthly contest. This month, I'm giving away a copy of my book, The Storytelling Nonprofit, A Practical Guide to Telling Stories That Raise Money and Awareness, um, which is as much of a workbook and a planner as it is an instructional guide on telling stories. So if you are interested in getting a copy of this along with like a little snail mail care package from me, here's what you need to do to enter. All you need to do, number one, is hit the subscribe button and become a subscriber here to my channel. And number two, leave a comment below this video and tell me what your biggest takeaway is from today's video. This contest will be open from Monday, July 29th until Friday, August 2nd, 2019 at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I will be announcing the winner on Tuesday, August 6th. Good luck.